Hey, it's me, Bob33, and today I'm reviewing Sonic Generation for the 360. This game is almost 10 years old. Did this Sonic game age pretty well, or is this another Sonic game that people say is not good and was never good in the first place? Let's find out. During this time, Sonic reputation was slowly rebuilding thanks to Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Curves with the help of the new Bruce Formula. This anniversary title was being worked on in 2009 and was originally being developed for the Wii, PS3, PSP, and the Nintendo DS. Other than the PS3, none of these versions ever came out. Instead, it came out on the 360 and the Nintendo 3DS, which is a completely different version of the game. According to Unseen64, there was originally going to be three Sonics. The dead one was going to play like Adventure Sonic, which was going to be voiced by Ryan Drummond, the original Sonic voice actor for the Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 games and Sonic Heroes, but he turned it down. And it makes me wonder if this game had Adventure Sonic and it was received pretty well. I wonder if Sega would be more confident to go back to the Adventure series sooner than way later. I'm assuming they're gonna try again at some point, but again, wish for thinking on my part. Anyway, let's get on to the actual game itself. The story begins with Sonic celebrating his birthday with his friends. Suddenly, a monster appears and took all his friends into a different dimension. After running through Green Hill Song and the other classic songs, Sonic and Tails meet up with their classic counterpart. Now they must go to Sonic Song, restoring all the curves in that world, and defeat Eggman and the Time Eater. Pretty simple story. There are two Sonic gameplay styles. There's the classic Genesis style, where you play in 2D and have pretty much every ability that Classic Sonic has with the spin dash and everything, while Modern Sonic has the boost formula with homing attack and goes from 2D to 3D in certain sections. Modern Sonic plays pretty much the same as in Unleashed and Sonic Curves, while Classic Sonic is fundamentally the same as the Genesis title, but going forward feels a bit heavy like every time you're trying to make a jump forward, it feels like there's something holding you back, which is uh, a bit tougher to go to platform to platform, but for the most part, it looks pretty well. And Modern Sonic, on the other hand, uh, turning is a bit difficult. It, again, it feels kind of heavy. feels like you're not going as left or right as tight as you should uh, go, but that's what the sidestep is for. So other than that little nitpick, uh, the controls work pretty fine. In this game, there are nine stages from past games from Sonic 1 to Sonic Colors and we made them for both Classic and Modern Sonic. Both versions are great with some complaints, but for the most part, they're pretty great. But, you know, just compare and see which one I like better. Again, this is my opinion and I like every stage in some way, but I want to see which one's better and is it classic or modern is better. Let's start with Screen Hill Song. Now this is either or for me in my opinion, but if I had to pick one, I'd go with classic because it captured pretty much the original stage pretty well while making it its own by combining Act 1 and 2 together while modern it was great at f the first half, but the second half feels like it's not Green Hill Zone. It feels like it went too far, you know, doing its own thing, but not keeping the uh, Green Hill aesthetic for the most part. So I had to pick the classic one. Chemical Print, I had to go with Modern right there, mainly because of the music and that you can pick different pathways in 3D, which is a pretty neat idea. I wish Sega would do more of that, or Sonic Team, so 
modern chemical plant, you get this one. Now, Sky Sanctuary, I have to give it to Martin, Barry, they're both great, but despite some of the real platforming in the modern one, I like jumping on the crowds in 3D, and the level design is pretty great, especially at the end. Well, classic, the one part I didn't like is that little platform heavy thing. I really didn't like that part of the stage, so Martin gets the easy win. Uh, well, I might be in favor of Speed Highway, but I picked the modern one, even though it's pretty much the same compared to the um, Sonic Adventure Dreamcast stage. But the only reason why I'm picking modern is because Classic felt it was too much platforming now in the speed, and I had a bad experience with the camera. For some reason, when going up a slope, it would turn uh, to its side, making um, Classic Sonic face uh, towards you. And it's a real glitch, but for the most part, the level was okay. That was a rare occasion, but still, I had to go with modern. Now, on to the fan favorite City Escape. I picked the classic one here because it's the best one, you know, one of the best stages ever. Not even just for the classic Sonic game, but for the whole game in general. It has a nice balance of speed and platforming, and I really like they took every aspect from Sonic Adventure 2 City Escape and make it its own thing, especially adding the skateboard to do some platforming to recreate that f first part of SA2. Modern was pretty good, but it felt more the same, so Classic definitely win this one. For Seaside Hill, I have to go with Classic Sonic again. I like how they add some Sonic 3 underwater aspect to it. Uh, mainly the one part in Hydro City or Hydrocity as I used to call it back then. And it feels like it could be a modern day Genesis game or stage. I would really like to see this uh, stage recreated in 16-bit. Uh, Crisis City from Sonic 06. Well, both Classic and Modern are pretty better than the 06 one, but that's no competition, but if I had to, to pick between the two, it's Crested Sonic, great balance of platforming and speed, and I really like the fake out at the end. Rooftop run, I like the modern one here better, it does a great job of combining the old and new elements from the original stage, and it has a lot of fast paced action. Crested has a bit too much platforming, and I know Sonic game is all about speed and platforming and I'm not looking for a perfect 50-50 but I would like a good balance between speed and platforming and unfortunately I think it focused too much on the platforming aspect. And finally with the score tied it comes down to Planet Rest which is my least favorite stage of the game in both classic and modern. Both of them felt too long and always stays as welcome in both play style, but if I had to choose one, it has to be modern, mainly because it's a bit faster, you know, because of the boost formula. Again, Classic is a bit too much platforming. But, uh, I do like how they integrated the wrist power in both stages, but I had to go with modern here, so modern wins by one point. But the game overall is pretty great. I do like to replay each stages over again, except for Planet Risp. So, really, you're going to have fun with either stage, even if you disagree with my favorites. There are also side missions with different goals. In my playthrough, I play the side character missions. You only need to complete one of these missions each song. For the most part, it's serviceable. Some of them are basic like race to the finish or capture the other character, but others are a bit unique, like Rouge's uh, mission is to distract the other robots or Vector's rhythm game. I will say that Sega should do more of this in future Sonic games, since so it gives the uh, supporting characters more time to shine, but that may be a Mickey's Paul wish, 
where something goes pretty wrong and everybody starts to hate it. So, I don't know, I, I mean, I'm not against uh, trying it again, but hopefully Sonic Team wouldn't mess that up. Boss battles are pretty great in this game. There's a regular boss battle with Eggman from Sonic 2 and Sonic and Nice. Perfect Chaos is a nice reimagining of that fight. Pretty much one of the best boss battles out there. And the rival battles against Metal Sonic, Shadow, and Silver are pretty much the best part as well. With Metal Sonic and Silver, you dodge the attack, while Shadow combines a race and a battle together when you feel engaged. These battles are pretty top notch and probably the best in the whole Sonic series, at least in the 3D ones. After getting the 7 Chaos Emerald, it's revealed that Dr. Eggman and his classic counterpart are in control of the Time Eater and it's up to the Sonics to turn super and beat that monster, while all the other Sonic characters just stand aside and shout instructions to you. Uh, pretty much that's the best use that Sega's ever going to get from them. The final boss battle unfortunately is the most disappointing part of the game, mainly because it's too easy and forgettable. All you do is get close to the monster and attack. You switch between the Sonics from 2D and 3D and pretty much you switch just to get closer to the monster and I've never seen anybody Attack with Classic Sonic, it's mainly Modern Sonic that gets the attack. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you can ever attack him with Classic Sonic, but he goes down pretty easy, nevertheless. And after defeating the Time Eater, everybody returns to the party, Classic Sonic returns to his time, while Modern Sonic says his future will be great, which is not true, especially after this game, considering the next game in the main series was Sonic Lost World and of course Sonic Boom and later Sonic Forces. Uh, hopefully Sonic 2022 will be a good game. But anyway, let's end the review. Enjoy your future! It's gonna be great! Sonic Generation is still a great game after all these years in my opinion. It may not be the best game in the series, but it's a great way to celebrate Sonic's past and I think for a lot of Sonic fans, it's a great time to be a Sonic fan even if it's only temporary. I love how they reimagine each levels and battle. The soundtrack remixes are great and gameplay are mostly solid. I'm surprised there wasn't a Sonic Generation 2. And now that I think about it, Sega don't really make direct sequels with their well received Sonic games. Sure, there's indirect sequels like Sonic Unleashed to Sonic Colors to Sonic Generations and Sonic Forces because of the boost formula, but not directly like a Sonic Colors 2, Generations 2, or even a Sonic Mania 2. This is probably the most positive received game in a long time. I wish Sega will strike when the iron is hot, but anyways, I think you should buy Sonic Generations. I'm sure it's available to download on the Microsoft uh, shop and probably the PlayStation Network. Anyways, uh, get this game. I think it's really worth the time, especially if you're a Sonic fan. Hey, it's me, Bobby 33 and thank you for watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if this video ended a little bit quick. My next video is going to be Sonic Colors for the Wii. Hopefully I can get that out by August. And maybe I'll do a review of Sonic Colors Ultimate, even though that's probably going to be basically the same game. But anyways, hopefully you like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys later.